Bine ați venit la numărul 26, ultima ediție pe anul 2022. N-are rost să mă prezint că mă gândesc că știți cine sunt. Eu sunt Ștefan. <laughs> ne, mă bucur să ne revedem ca de fiecare dată. Dacă aveți prieteni care sunt timizi și nu vor să intre în call, poți să intre pe live stream. Deci puteți să le dați share acum. Este ei pe canalul nostru de YouTube. Um, astăzi îl avem invitat pe Ioan Șolderia, care este Lead QA. Tema din această seară este Introduction to Cyprus. Cam acestea, acestea fiind spuse, am să-i predau cuvântul lui Ioan. Uh, I think we had a question. Hold on. Uh, yes, it is in Romanian, unfortunately. Or we can switch to English. <laughs> But I, I, I guess it's in Romanian. We can switch to English if that's the desire. It's just going to be a little bit difficult to follow some of the slides that I have prepared. Because that's kind of a mix between Romanian and English. Mostly goes into the direction of Romanian. So it's up to... It's up to you, basically. It's up to you. To everybody who is <laughs> here and can say something. I don't care, to be honest. So, Andre, if everybody el- uh, else wants to have the meeting in English, we can do it in English. Or if not, we can do it in Romanian. I don't really care. I'm comfortable with both. Okay, let's go okay. with English then. Then we go with English. <clears throat> Good. Um, then let me try and share my screen. Hopefully this is going to work. Please tell me when you see something. Yep. Okay, so um, welcome to this introduction to Cyprus. I'm Iwan. I'm not going to say much about me. I'm been doing QA for about I don't know 15 years. Um, a little bit of mobile web, mostly SAP, SharePoint, so a little bit of everything. And um, I recently became uh, Cyprus Ambassador, but it has of honestly nothing to do with the presentation because I talked to Stefan way before uh, I became a Cyprus Ambassador to do this presentation. And today I'm going to present to you Cyprus and hopefully by the end of the presentation, um, you will give it a try. You will want to use it. And... One important point, if you have any questions, um, regardless of what I'm doing, just feel free to interrupt me. And one other thing, I do encourage you to follow along because we will do certain parts of the presentation um, live, so live coding session. Okay, so what's our agenda for today? Um, Let me hide this. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, test automation in general. Then we will see how hard or how easy it is to do a Cypress installation. While doing the installation, I'm going to show you how the whole structure of Cypress is so that you can know beforehand where um, different settings need and can be added. Um, once we have the installation done, we're going to explore it. We're going to do some tests and well, instead of the end, you will see when we get to the end. <clears throat> Now, again, ignore the Romanian part, I'm going to do it in English. I would like to start with a question and the question would be, um, is anybody at the moment doing test automation in their projects, in their free time, um, at their work, at their freelancing? Yes, no. Uh, let me see, because I cannot, yep, okay. <clears throat> uh, Stefan, one, one question. Um, 
all the other participants can speak, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So feel free to, to feel, open feel up to your, speak, uh, your mics, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey. I Good. So going back. So um, you're doing test automation, some of you. Um, the question goes into the direction uh, also, uh, what kind of tests? So do you, do you do more end-to-end -end tests? Do you do more integration tests, more unit tests? Um, and the reason why I'm asking this is, um, it seemed to me um, during my experience that a lot of people who either have not that much experience in automation or only heard about automation, whenever they hear the word test automation, only one thing comes to their mind, and that is right here, Selenium. Like everybody, if you ask anybody who's doing something in IT, what what do you associate with test automation? Everybody will say Selenium because it's one of the oldest used software, well, actually libraries on the market, and people just tend to start using that. They don't go any further. They don't explore. But I don't know if you know, I hope you know, but if you don't, um, the market for test automation tools is big. It's really big. And um, here I have a slide with a few, only a few of the tools for Selenium is among them, but we have a way more. We have Tricentis Tosca, we have Postman for doing um, API, we have SOAP UI again for API, Appium for doing mobile, and the one that we are going to focus on today is right here, Cyprus. And you will see why I wanted to focus on Cyprus and what makes Cyprus different, what makes Cyprus stand out in comparison to all the other tools that you see here. Now, before I present to you Cyprus and before we start to do uh, the installation of Cyprus, um, I want to ask you about um, or what's your opinion on the following topics. Um, what or why would you consider it difficult for somebody to uh, do test automation or to start in test automation? Um, any topics or any opinion on, opinions on, on, on this topic from? Well, mostly the fact is that um, I know um, the tutorials you see on YouTube and so on are from non-native English speakers, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, kind of has a language barrier. And also there are no, I don't know, let's say really good materials for this as well. So that's a big downside for test automation. Cool. Any other opinions? Any other points which you want to point out? Um, yeah. Um, we, I mostly have problems with mocking and stubbing, uh, like deeper methods or variables or classes or other dependencies, uh, which are not like injected or, or anything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Um, anything else? Maybe set up and depends on what tool you're using but my so for rails and laravel um, the setup is pretty easy but for um javascript uh, frameworks that that has been like pretty rough pretty difficult it's really interesting that you point out javascript because um so the issues here um for those who don't speak romanian uh, what i've seen um in general uh, as issues in um starting with test automation or issues seen while um, doing test automation was on the one hand, um, the language um, that you use, the language bindings or the language in which you write the tests. Uh, because um, when you usually, I mean, usually when you do test automation, you start with web automation. And when you do web automation, you want to learn a little bit of JavaScript. But imagine you're learning JavaScript and um, people come and say, well, you need to do the test automation in Java. It's totally different universe. Um, also, as you pointed out, um, in some cases you have installation that takes a lot of time on the one hand, it may take a lot of time or it's confusing. Uh, and if you cannot really install the tool, <laughs> then that makes it impossible to begin with. Um, also, 
once you get to install the tool, you have flaky tests. So tests that uh, you run, I don't know, 10 times. And for some reason, you have no idea why, but for some reason it passed eight times and two times it just fails and you cannot explain it. Or you have tests or creating new tests is a slow process because as you pointed out, pretty uh, pretty good. Thank you very much for, for, your, for your comment. Um, you have, either do not have enough documentation or you have tutorials that you see which are hard to understand due to language barrier. And I want to present to you, so ta-da, <laughs> here is Cypress. So on maybe like a, a, a behind the, the um, um, curtains information, the idea for Cypress or when Cypress was made, it had on the first hand, it had developers in mind because um, it, it was made or uh, it, the, its main purpose was to create a an, an, uh, framework or uh, testing. Yeah, it's actually a testing framework because it has, it's not, it's way more than a library. So uh, a testing solution, if you want, that allows end-to-end -end tests to be created by anyone, but it did begin with uh, the, the need for from developers because Again, as you pointed out, so you have different frameworks and you do not know which one to choose. You have here Selenium, you have Mocha, you have Karma, you have uh, um, web, web level, you have Nightwatch. Uh, it's hard, it's hard to take this decision. It's hard to bundle it all together. And Cypress, and you will see, it makes the whole process of installing, writing tests and running tests, and even debugging tests really, really, easy any questions until we start with the actual installation no let's do it okay so in most cases as again thank you for pointing this out um you have a humongous list of prerequisites when you need to install something so you need uh, for example, for Selenium and WebDriver, you need to have Maven, you need to, to download um, the WebDriver jar files, you need to uh, download other jar files, you need to update your POM XML. It's, it's, it's complex if you haven't done it. For Cypress, you just need one thing, and that is Node.js. So as long as you have Node, you can install Cypress on your computer. And that is what we're going to do right now. Feel free to follow along. So I have here just uh, an empty project. In order to actually um, be able to install Cypress, I need to do, of course, um, npm init. So to tell Visual Studio Code that I'm going to have a node project, um, just going to let some all the default values here. Again, feel free to follow along because if you have questions, once we go a little bit deeper, we can address them while um, you also can, I don't know, share your screen or uh, we can review it also on your part. <clears throat> and once you have uh, uh, a node project, you just need to do npm install Cypress. Okay. To type it, it's better. Now it's going to take a little bit of, of time because uh, you will see um, the um, Cypress project is pretty big. But while we're waiting, if you have again any questions up to this point, or if you already started to do the, uh, did you already start to do the installation yourself? Anyone yes, else? Okay. So once we have installed Cypress, um, as you can see, we still don't have anything right here. Um, in order to actually start Cypress, we just need to do npm Cypress open. Sorry, MPX, I press open. And 
and it's going to yeah, for me i already installed it earlier for you it might say this is the first time that you installed or that you're running cypress 12. for me i installed it earlier to double check that everything is working so i already have all the dependencies on my machine um Feel free to tell me once uh, you see also this screen right here. Yeah, I see it at least. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I if, see it too. Okay, if if you want me to continue, just tell me. If you want me to wait a minute longer until everybody sees it, just tell me. Okay, I guess we can continue. Yeah. So we have, uh, we're almost there with the setup. We still need to do two things. Um, we need to tell Cypress, okay, I want to have um, Cypress installed or um, set up for what kind of testing. And I'm going to show you how to do this for end-to-end uh, -end testing, but keep in mind that you can also do component testing. So um, you can test your Angular, view and they will going to put svelte as well in the future so you can also do component testing on your project and i guess but react as well right react as well yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so we're going to do end-to-end -end testing as you can see it says not configured yet we're going to do the configuration i clicked it it does take a minute or two to uh, perform tasks in the background and if you remember from this slide right here. I said we do the Cypress installation, and then we're going to have a look at the Cypress structure. Now, when you first install Cypress, you have um, four uh, parts where you configure, um, or four, four, four parts that are important to you um, um, to work with after you do the installation, uh, but we're going to Review them also in the ID once we complete the installation. Uh, the first one is the configuration JSON. Here you have um, the possibility to uh, activate or deactivate certain features of Cypress. Uh, you can set up, uh, for example, uh, base URLs in case you have um, different URLs that you want to, to test. Um, support. Um, here you, ha you have, um, since as you saw, Cypress is in the end an NPM package, or to be more precise, it's actually an Electron app. You can install um, a lot of uh, node packages that you can then uh, import and use in your tests to make your tests more flexible, to make your tests uh, uh, better. And this is done here in the support end-to-end -end, uh, JSON. Oh. Uh, Commands.js um, is um, the file in, from Cypress where you can actually do two things. On the one hand, you have uh, Cypress commands that for your projects, you can actually overwrite, or you have uh, the possibility uh, to create brand new comments here that are automatically uh, usable then in your Cypress tests. And the fixtures.example.json in the fixtures folder, uh, it's the folder where you put your test data. So here you can put, as it is here in the example, you can put a JSON that you can uh, afterwards um, use in your tests. So you have the test data here and you can reference it and, and use it in your tests, or you can put uh, PDF files, um, images, or Excels, whatever, that you can, again, use in your tests. We do here continue. And uh, it already, um, so in this part here, it checked my system, and um, it checked what browsers I have installed and what versions of browsers I have on my computer. And uh, I can select from here um, on which browser I want to have my tests run. Just go with Chrome. <clears throat> uh, 
Now, all of the tests in Cypress need to be in something called a spec file. And as you can see, Cypress um, had a look at our project while doing the setup. And it, of course, saw that we have no tests because well, we're just installing it. We have absolutely no tests. So here we can do two things. We can either create a new test or we can tell Cypress, I want to learn from you. I want to see what kind of examples you have. And going back, I click the first option. If I go now to Visual Studio Code, you see here, I have all of these tests that I can already use. And let's actually go back to Cypress and say, okay, I want to do the getting started to do the, or to run the to-do. And now Cypress will automatically run our tests. This is, this is an example app from, from Cypress um, with a to-do app with uh, uh, different um, uh, options. So comment that you, you usually uh, come across while doing automation. So for example, uh, navigation assertions, uh, this all, so all of them, for each of these options you have automatically from Cypress, you have uh, tests created right here and they match uh, one to one. And you have also examples, um, how uh, to do the test, what is being done in, in the test. And this is really helpful, again, when you get started. Because uh, coming back to what was said before, um, sometimes it's hard to do the setup. It's hard to find good documentation. And it's also hard to find tutorials uh, in a good English that you can actually uh, follow. Um, was everybody able to um, do the setup that I did? I was, yeah. Anybody yes. else? Uh, yes, I was. So if I would tell you that at this moment, we actually installed Cypress, would that convince you that Cypress installation is really easy? Mm, and yes. that you can, from this point on, actually write full tests with, with Cypress? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my my issues were when I try to use Cypress with the Next.js app and try to add like authentication and other things. But I think that's a little bit more uh, advanced. That's a little bit out of scope for this okay, gotcha. presentation. Yep, yep. Uh, the scope is to present to you Cypress to show you um, how you can install it, how you run the tests, how you can create your own tests and then also uh, show you some features that maybe you didn't know, uh, show you something that might uh, make the whole getting started and learning process easier to do. Yep, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so now that we have installed Cypress, oh, uh, we can actually go ahead and Experiment a little bit with Cypress. So, um, we did here, so we installed Cypress, we have all of these tests, but what if we didn't have this test? So we can just remove them. And you see, I removed them from the IDE. And now when I'm here in the specs overview, uh, Cypress already sees we have no new tests, so I can do the other options, create new spec file, and we can just say view, and we have again one test. It, it's the uh, default format, so we have it here, CPU, and with the uh, information. So um, let me make it just a little bit bigger. big maybe can everybody see it sorry uh, i have my glasses and i can i cannot see that good with, with my glasses um so um 
the format of a Cypress test, if we want to go in and experiment a little bit, is uh, it uses describe and it block. So um, you can have one or multiple tests uh, in um, in a describe block. So if you just want to create another test, just put another it block here. If we save it and if we run it, we see here we have two different tests and we do pass two, for example. Um, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, I'm pretty sure you noticed. And on each save that I do here, Cypress automatically runs uh, the test. So at each time each time I do a save, it's automatically run here. Now, um, if, for example, you do not want to um, generate all of the examples that Cypress shows you, and uh, you want to try to do uh, something yourself uh, from scratch, I do recommend to use the following uh, experiment. Um, so if we go in Cypress, into cypressconfig.js, uh, we just need to enter experimental studio and put it as true. We save this and now Cypress will reload and run our test. This is really nice when you are um, um, beginning to, to use uh, Cypress and um, don't why is it now loading that much? Okay, I see the same thing. It's loading for me as well. Okay, let me <clears throat> copy the full from here, but actually should be the same. Same thing. Okay, let me just uh, close this and start it again. Yeah, now it's working. Yeah, so I had to restart Cypress. Yeah. yeah that's so uh, uh, once we have Experimental Studio on, when we hover over our tests, we see like something like a magic wand. And what this Experimental Studio allows us to do is uh, actually um, something similar to a record and play. So if we want to do a new test, let me just add the URL that I had here prepared. Say I want to visit that URL. It will reload, go to the URL, and it will see, I don't know, to test. Um, something here, something here, something here. We submit it and we have an error and we even have assertions um, implemented. Now, once we did all of the actions that we wanted to perform, just need to tell Cypress Studio, save comments. Um, I don't know, let's say Cypress and type studio save and we will see that the test was actually saved in our ide all of the commands were there and now our test runs and it failed nice uh, because we did the assertion wrong but what the point which i wanted to make is with the cypress studio we we can quickly learn how, or we can quickly generate tests in Cypress, so we can play around and experiment. This is a feature which not a lot of uh, 
people know or not a lot of people use but i find it really helpful um if we uh, i mean if you um you know about it uh, was everybody able to follow uh, with what we were doing Anybody else? Because Stefan is always really fast. <laughs> yep, following. Uh, okay, good. Any questions so far? Nope. No questions. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. So from what I see here, um, the test has been saved in the Cypress config file? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, in the uh, oh, okay. ci.js, I yeah. had the config file open. Uh, no, it in the specs file basically. Yeah. In, on the end-to-end. -end test. Makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, I had too many <laughs> files open. So it's saved there. You can. Uh, what you can also do. So this is important to know. So um, we did this test, right? Um, one important thing is if I try to you. So I can with the Cypress Studio, I can do two things. I can either change or add new actions to an existing test or create a new test. We did right now, we created a new test. But if I try to add new commands to this test here, um, I won't, I shouldn't really be allowed to do that because um, you can only add new commands to a test. Um, the test is not failing. So, if we want to to add uh, comments to a test, we need to um, to make the test pass. So, for example, here, um, if I can just if I can just change the assertion, I make it a little bit smaller, um, or not that exact, then the test should pass. It fails again. Okay, then Ah, okay, it didn't wait enough. Ah, okay, that's something else. That is something else. I, didn't, I wasn't really expecting that. Okay, we can do it then like this. We can comment it out. And now we can add commands to the test. We can actually make it uh, the message not blank. So this is a test. Um, and if we submit it now, still get message must be between. Okay. Um, let's just not do the assertion right now, but we save it. That should be added here was added perfect for each time you do a new addition with the cypress studio you get the uh, comment so that you know what you added last time and now the test has passed um, one other thing which i wanted to to show you is um the possibility if you don't have any other questions, if you have questions, then um, we address the questions. So, so basically, what you're saying is you can write a whole test using Studio. Yeah, multiple tests, and then of course you just go in and you refactor all of this to make it. <laughs> yeah, remove all the comments. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, remove all the, all the comments on on one hand, but um, um, you can uh, create custom commands. Um, the important thing is, is uh, selectors are, are, are done for you. Um, you can oh, also one other thing. So um, if you're struggling with selectors, because um, this is something which I did in the past I, when I didn't uh, know uh, very well how to select a, or to find the right selector for, for elements, that was really a struggle. So I would always have issues uh, from Selenium saying element not found, element not found, and so forth, because I was using the wrong selector. So Cypress, um, um, the experimental studio, automatically gets, let's say, the best selector that uh, it can find. 
but it um, in the Cypress runner, if you have a test or if you're on the page, you have here also an incorporated selector. So you can just go to the element that you want, you click it and it generates the selector that um, found one match in Cypress. And you can either do it with uh, ci.get or ci.contains. And so that contains, for example, um, if I copy this and do, here we have uh, ci.get sub, uh, submit button. So it gets a submit button based on the um, ID. But if I do contains, and I think it was submit, yeah, I just do the text. That should also work. So again, Cypress is really good on this finding elements part and and something that cypress doesn't uh, does offer and selenium doesn't have for example other uh, tools for automation don't have is what the cypress teams call uh, time traveling so i can scroll or navigate on the left side here and i can see exactly what is happening in my test i can even stop i can pin i can view console logs. So I have almost full control over what's happening. It's like I would I would be developing it. So I see, I, I click it and I see the state of the actual application at, the, at that particular moment. So it's really good for debugging purposes. You don't even need right now, for example, to add any uh, breakpoints. To, you don't even need to debug it. it you, you're debugging it <laughs> directly into Cypress if you, if you want. Yeah, that's basically my favorite feature with this one in selenium uh, debugging was a lot harder because uh, you need to add breakpoints to yeah. every step and in case for example you have um so we are something like here we have an assertion we want to check a message you you check you you click the the um line of the test that you want or the last line of the test and you see okay for some reason that the text doesn't match so you know exactly where you were where you did something wrong you can um, you can find that you can find that the issue pretty fast so this time travel is is awesome um also stefan i think if i'm correct you have when you did this choose browser part you have another one here right uh no i was missing the safari one you actually missing the Safari one. Yeah. Even if even if you're on a Mac. Yeah, it was missing it. Uh, the, I, I expected it to see it, <clears throat> but it didn't see it. Okay. So would you be impressed if we can edit? I would. I, I, I'm not testing on I'm not using Safari all that much these days, but uh, I would be impressed, yes. How how so, can we do that? <clears throat> we have like, like I said, uh, when we do the installation, um, Cypress itself is, to its core, uh, an NPM package. So it's an NPM package where you can install other <laughs> NPM packages if you want. So if we do NPM install Playwright WebKit, let me just open the terminal here. And now we do MPX Cypress open. Okay, it installed. I opened it. And you would expect to be able to use it. <clears throat> so uh, you see here, end -to -end. Uh, end -to -end yeah, I, see, I see WebKit now. Yes, I do see. But can you select it? Uh, no. No. And again, coming back to the point that was made while um, I asked about difficulties in automation, um, documentation. Yeah, it actually tells you what you need to do. It says Playwright WebKit is installed and WebKit is detected, but experimental WebKit support is not enabled. No problem. As we did before, in the same place under our Cypress config, we just do 
experimental WebKit support. And I, I copied this, but you can type it experimental and you do WebKit support and you just put it to true. Oh, it's, it's working now. Yeah, I see it. I can click on it actually. Oh, if you do that, let's see. And you click on it, you will see that. Let's see if it, uh... oh, okay. Yeah. So it opened up a private window or a playwright window more specifically. In, uh... Of course, I mean, this does not mean that you can do, um, let's say, one-to-one -one or real automation on Safari, on the latest version of Safari. But in theory, if we are to think things through, WebKit is the heart of Safari. So any issues that you might encounter in WebKit or using WebKit, uh, to your uh, to do your tests should also appear in the real latest version of safari i, I so, guess i guess sorry i guess you should have uh, a very specific issue within safari itself uh, that would pose an issue while writing a test but then again those are very rare I, I would assume. I haven't used, haven't used Safari in a couple of years, but uh, um, what I know usually a lot of, I mean, Safari is not, doesn't have that big of a market share, but Cypress does offer the possibility uh, in case you do a project where you have um, Safari or, or, you, or Safari is supported as a browser that by using this um, hack, if you want, for WebKit installation, uh, you are able to see how um, uh, or to run automated tests um, on WebKit and how uh, that behavior would uh, happen on Safari. Of course, you can run manual tests uh, in addition. It's always good to do that. But having this possibility um, sure makes it a lot more, uh, let's say, um, versatile than Selenium, for example, where you can actually not install as far as I know, Safari, uh, a Safari web driver, if you want, on uh, a Windows machine and make it like this. But I may be mistaken. Last time I checked, you couldn't do that. But if if you can, uh, then it's my, well, uh, my error. I, I guess it makes sense but because I, I will check. I guess it makes sense because you don't, the, the, the Safari team doesn't offer support for Windows in like, I don't know, five years, seven years. I don't know. It's a long time since they offered support for it so it makes sense in a in a way yeah so but yeah i'm, I'm glad it's working so <laughs> i can i can see i can see the window okay before we uh, go uh, to the next part which i wanted to to present to you um if you have any any questions to this point any other questions am i going too fast i usually have a tendency to speak really really fast when i'm presenting uh, but I can speak slower also, <laughs> so just tell me. Well, all good so far. Okay. okay. Uh, so before uh, I show anything else, I want to explore uh, a little bit what we have here. So uh, when we did the installation, we have a couple of um, um, options if you want here. So on the one hand, we have the specs. So this is a one-to-one -one representation of what we have. Let me just close both of this, of what we have here under the end-to-end -end, uh, folder. Uh, under runs, um, yeah, this one, okay, let me open it in, in Chrome because it looks a little bit better there. So we have the specs and under runs. Uh, this is something which I'm going to show you a little bit uh, later, how this looks. Um, this is one feature of Cypress, which um, um, allows you to run your tests um, and to do integration with CI/CD pretty easily and to see a lot of information regarding your tests. Uh, and then you have settings. In the settings, you can see general project um, 
um, settings, you can see um, Uh, device information, so what we're using, so we're using Visual Studio Code, uh, we can see any proxies, we don't have any proxy set, again, it's cloud and uh, Cypress information, uh, we're going to see a little bit later. In the project settings, if you remember, when we run the test, we saw that at one point, it failed because it, after waiting for uh, 4,000 milliseconds, it failed. Now, again, coming back to the documentation point, um, without actually going outside of Cyprus, if you go to the settings and you just look for 4,000, you see we have a default timeout of 4,000. And you can just copy this from here, go into the um, Cypress configuration again, and um, and just increase this to, I don't know, 7,000. Save it. And now, as you can see, it is 7,000. And Cypress also shows us what we changed. Um, so it, it marks it, it marks this areas where we did any changes. Experimental Studio, you see, it's true. WebKit support is true. So these three parts were changed by us. And we didn't even have to, again, leave Cypress to know where or what property we need to change. We, we had all of this information here. However, I'm going to show you at the end that the Cypress documentation, um, from my point of view, is unmatched by any other framework, library, any other testing solution. So they present points so clear, they give you so much information then that it's, it's enough for both uh, an experienced uh, person in automation and also for somebody who is just using it for the first time. Okay, um, going back to the presentation. So we saw a lot in Cypress about its good parts. So easy to install, really easy to run tests. Tests are run fast, tests um, you have time table, you have experimental features, you have a lot of flexibility, but there are trade-offs. So Cypress at its core, it was intended to be an end-to-end -end, um, automation tool or automation framework. So using Cypress for something like security testing or using some uh, Cypress for something like performance testing, you can do that there are ways of doing it, but that's not the point. I mean, that's important to, to understand. Of course, as you saw, we have at the moment the possibility to use Cypress either for end-to-end, -end, so to do an end-to-end -end setup or to do component testing. When Cypress first started, you only had end-to-end. -end. Component testing only got added, I think, one year, one year plus ago, and it's already evolving. So in the future, it may have uh, options, specific configurations to be able to perform both um, security and performance testing. Um, since Cypress at, at its core is an Electron app and you saw how Cypress tests are run, um, the consensus at the moment is that you will never have multi-browsers or you will not be able to run at the same time uh, and interact with multiple um, uh, tabs of a browser. So, or to put it different, and also you cannot use Cypress to interact with two browsers at the same time. For this last part with the domain, um, some changes are coming and some changes have been done in, in, uh, in the Cypress 12 release. Um, but at the moment, it's usually uh, one single domain due to also security reasons. Uh, so this is again, temporary trade-offs, permanent ones. Uh, first one makes a lot of sense. I mean, um, you won't be able to do native mobile events since Cypress is mostly, like I said, end-to-end -end and browser um, focused. 
and iframe support is there it is however limited and in some configurations if you have iframe in iframe in iframe in iframe it gets messy and complicated but it can be done um now I have a small video about the Cypress dashboard or the Cypress cloud, which you, um, which you saw um, in the project configuration and I'll just let it uh, run. So it allows you, what you see here can be achieved really easily. You just need to make um, an account on Cypress and you have, you get then um, an, an ID. You just add that ID into your configuration, and then you can actually run your test in the Cypress cloud on the Cypress dashboard. And you have these views. So you can see your latest runs, you can see uh, the test results, you can see for each test you have, um, for each test that ran, you will have the information uh, passed failed, of course, but you also have a video of everything that, uh, that happened. And you will also have via the uh, Cypress dashboard, you have um, CICD um, um, configuration and, and installation support. I guess this uh, cloud uh, dashboard is limited, right? Or um, you have some limitations, I guess, or? So you have on the first hand, you have um, the first tier right here, yeah. So it's free for up to three users. So you can make a small project with your friends, use like free users. So what does that mean? It means you will have access to the dashboard. You can see the results. You can work there to, to, um, to improve your work. Um, but you only have 500 um, tests run per month. So once it gets a little bit bigger, you will need to uh, if you and if you want to still use the Cypress dashboard, you will need to have one of these uh, paid accounts. And here is, like you said, uh, our limitations. Here's a, a, an overview of all all the features. For starting, the first one, the free tier, is is enough. If you want to go a little bit deeper. Uh, for example, uh, something which came uh, this year is flaky test detection. So um, you run your tests and the Cypress cloud has a way of detecting uh, based on um, runtime, based on how much a step took this time and last time and so forth, where your tests have potential to become flaky. And it, this is then pointed out to you, which is really good because um, if... Um, like I said in the in the beginning, um, flaky tests or so having a test run uh, ten times and from the ten times eight uh, pass and two times they fail, uh, having that having a possibility to detect such behavior uh, before it happens is awesome. It's really really awesome. Um, any questions regarding the the dashboard? I don't know if you ever tried the dashboard. There were some of you who. Um, seem to have used Cypress in the past, um, asking uh, that direction. So if you used the dashboard uh, before. I haven't uh, used the dashboard um, because I didn't need the all of those features like for Teams and everything else. I used it only locally. Okay. And locally, do you run your tests like we did right here or do you run your tests in headless mode? Um, so while I tested um, Cyprus, I had, like I said, I had a very hard time to uh, to add authentication and actually run the tests bef uh, behind the authentication middleware, let's call it screen, whatever. Uh, so I didn't really use it all that much, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. I have implemented a few tests and I like mocked the authentication in some way, but it wasn't such a nice experience. I, di I, I did that, I think, a year and a half ago, maybe. And I was using all of the guides and everything, but I just couldn't, couldn't make it work in a nice way. Uh, so on lo locally, uh, I used the, the UI and mm -hmm. I think I 
also managed to use the headless mode in GitHub Actions or something like that? I mean, you don't. I mean, uh, the headless mode you can also use locally. Uh, yeah, of course. You, yeah. To do npm Cypress uh, run. Yeah. And all of the tests that we have uh, at the moment, uh, and we only have one, will run for us. Um, Cypress will then show us the um, the results. Yeah. And if you do npm npm Cypress run, you also get. Um, a video of the whole uh, tests. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's very nice, very properly set up in that way. And I kind of love, uh, I kind of like this, that. like uh, all of these like helpers, like with the videos and images, that's always a good thing. And the time traveling stuff, I didn't really like if some things of, but that's different. We'll talk about it in the end, at the end of the presentation, maybe. Okay. Um, so one thing or one last point which I have, um, you mentioned uh, that you tried Cypress. You mentioned that, or I also mentioned that Cypress has one of the best documentations and I want to show it to you. So if we just go to the um, Cypress website, which is www.cypress.io and we do docs, we have uh, all of the existing um, guides. And for example, if we say, I don't know you said um, authentication. Now, depending on, uh, I don't know if you use the new plugin, we have, there are some plugins uh, which can help you handle um, authentication right now. Um, some of them are new. There are also some new Cypress features like, um, Cypress session, which would allow you to um, um, mimic, let's say, or to reuse um, different sessions once to perform an authentication to use that uh, in multiple uh, tests. Um, but the idea which I wanted to stress out is um, all of these guides in the documentation, so they're really well well structured. Start they start up um, small and go step by step. So from installation, opening the application, and to end testing. Some of them we did as as well. Um, and you have um, via this intuitive and I would say really easy to use um, search. So in case you I don't know want to do assertion. Um, have a guide which tells you what kind of assertions can be done in Cyprus. Um, you have um, all of them listed here. Or you can even and you even have examples. So how you, <laughs> if you want to check length. Sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I was just laughing because you saved me uh, a lot of trouble because um, I double checked assertions uh, within the API page and not the guide. So I was just, yeah, really um, trying to see about those assertions. Yeah, and usually they have, so they go, um, like I said, in the, at one point, they were focused so that uh, both people who are experienced in automation or are just getting started can, can use it. So you have a lot of examples. And for each example, you get also um, the comment, what exactly is being done. So a certain visibility, existence, state, CSS, um, a lot of uh, a lot of options, a lot of options. That's why I like it. Uh, plus, um, you can always go to their uh, GitHub and uh, ask questions, also or post. Um, issues the community is very 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 supportive i can uh, if you want stefan after the call i can actually give you all of the uh, links that i have here so this one is for the home page then uh, twitter linkedin facebook and also um the the discord for cyprus oh yeah that would so, be useful I, I can share them with everyone so if you have that uh, there is almost no way you cannot find an answer 
to any query that you might have, even if the answer is it's not working at the moment. <laughs> and with that, um, we kind of went through everything which I wanted to present to you. But uh, now we have time for questions. Or discussions. Or discussions. <laughs> yeah. I so uh, I guess they, they, they tried to cover as much as possible in the documentation from what I can tell, at least. Uh, but I haven't I haven't used Cypress that much, so maybe Adrian, you know more. Have you have you tried it, for example, well, the documentation that is? Have you oh yeah, it? yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, and I remember like um, I think I made it work at one point, but it wasn't that straightforward. And I was using Next Twelve, I think. Uh, they had a starter repo, and I tried it, but. I couldn't see, I, I couldn't find anywhere in the documentation an authentication example. So every, everything was set up like, here's like the basic thing you can do to test out like Cypress. You can like find a, a selector and just do this assertion and whatever. But there weren't like very, any other um, uh, examples uh, to, to truly like use like next auth. Next auth is an uh, first party uh, authentication library for next js. So uh, I guess like that a lot of people that are trying next js which is a very popular framework are going to go with next auth. So to me as a developer as a dev tool builder uh, it makes sense to have that guide in the recommendation and say hey okay you, this would be like the majority of people or a lot of people that would use this so this is how you do uh, testing with a, an authenticated user using next js and next auth right because it's the first party library and i couldn't couldn't make it work oh i mean if you, uh, if you... uh, sorry i just yeah. found the exact exactly your issue but i guess you already found this uh, documentation so there's this actually in the next auth uh, npm package, there's a in the documentation section. There's testing with Cypress. By the way, how do you set uh, up? And... <laughs> yeah, uh, hold on, I'll, I'll share it with you. <laughs> yeah, I guess I found <laughs> I'll share it with it, everybody yeah. actually. So this is just yeah. for, for your specific case. I mean, if you have, like I said, if you have a um, feature request or um, um, if you find any issues in the documentation or anything that is missing or use case that is missing yeah you can honestly also write to me uh, since i'm a cypress ambassador i have more direct contact to the developer team starting Definitely. december <laughs> starting this year so uh in the discord we can we chat there and we can raise different issues and uh, they also accept for example they accept pull requests for documentations um so people keep updating documentation. So it's like a live organism. It's it's growing. And the community so far, as far as I could tell, it's really open and nice. friendly. And nobody is actually uh, mad if you find anything that can be or should be improved. No, definitely. Just... definitely. I never I never said that. No, no I, um... I, I know. But uh, uh, we each have different experiences. I, mean, I, I also have experience with... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's what I wrote, and they said, no, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to do it. Uh, Definitely. The funny thing is, uh, the experimental feature that I showed you, so Cypress Experimental Studio, it was put in in Cypress version 7. So I read about it, I did a video, I did an article about it, I was really pushing it to people, and from version 9 to version 10, they changed the structure of Cyprus. And they decided to take it out. And I did a video <laughs> complaining that they took it out. And I wasn't the first one and the only one. And from that video, not only my video, but from that, another article, another article, another article, they raised a, a GitHub, a, a GitHub uh, uh, um, thread and there were about 10,000 votes to put it back in. Next oh, wow. version, it was back in. <laughs> so Impressive. The, the power of the users. So uh, we did lobbying for it because a lot of people said it really helps when I install Cypress, somebody comes in and has never used it, has absolutely no idea ab about it. It's okay. Documentation is good. It's very good. But it still helps somebody who never used the tool to be able to feel 
confidence if they can generate a test in five minutes, even if that test is not perfect, as, as we saw right now, you might have that test that I did, of course, needs tweaking, changing, and so forth. But for somebody who never used a tool to be able to by itself, by him, him or herself, to generate a new test in five minutes, it, it, it's it's incredible. The feeling is, wow. That's that, that's my point of view. I mean, when I when I wrote my first automated tests, I, I thought I I invented fire. <laughs> so, what what's your where are you coming from? Are you, uh, have you ever uh, have you always developed in Node.js or are you coming from PHP, Ruby, Java, anything, something else? Uh, I started with uh, Visual Basic Script because the okay. first automation tool that I used is was called Quick Test Professional. It's now um, or QTP. It was okay. really, really old. It's an it's it's from uh, Hewlett Packard or now Microfocus. Okay. Uh, it was a com- uh, uh, um, commercial tool, um, a lot of licensing costs, but I used it for a very specific uh, project, a very specific use case. It had support for uh, SAP, so yeah. it had object recognition built in for SAP elements, but the whole code, the whole logic had to be done in visual basic script. So from that to Java to... Have you ever done Rails and Ruby? Uh, No, but I know, but I, uh, my wife does Ruby. Okay. And, and Laravel as well. Um, I've never done PHP. Yeah. So they have like pretty good support and pretty good testing libraries with like the same things like selectors and custom commands. They're, they're not called the same, but they do have pretty good support. And um, you can like run a test in like in five minutes as well. So five minutes or less, you just install it and then uh, you run a test and it, you get that magic. So yeah, I was wondering where where are you coming from because I know that not all ecosystems have the these things figured out. I'm not saying like Rails or Laravel has it figured out figured out, but they have these helpers and these these packages that that do do that. I mean, but, if I yeah. if I would compare um... again, again, sorry, sorry, I'm not comparing, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not doing no, anything. It's, it's, it's just like just a conversation. Um... I, I don't know, maybe in your example, in your example, uh, so, okay, you are able to run a test in fast. Uh, the question is, do you have also the built-in structure for it? Because something that Cypress offers and it's not, let's say, intrinsic everywhere. So in, yeah. uh, you have a structure, you have, you, you have a place. If, if you want, if you want to, in, in a Java, for example, in, in the Java, if you want to do, um, to read, uh, a JSON file or to read an XML. You have to install this, install that, and you have to be very careful where you put it because maybe it doesn't. So some of the, the yeah, some of the these headaches uh, that I faced in the past, Cypress solves by its structure. Of course, uh, I, we use the default structure, which uh, goes with JavaScript syntax, but you can also switch it to TypeScript if you want TypeScript. Yeah. So those two were this, this is another thing uh that bugged me with Cypress. It's it looks like JavaScript. It says it's JavaScript, but it's actually not. <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's okay. it's it is its own language or like a JavaScript runtime, I don't know exactly, that looks like JavaScript, but it's not. You cannot use like a sync await, you cannot use like it has some built in sync await. So uh um it you it usually has, but it, it has a logic behind it. So oh, no, it, I agree. I agree. I totally agree. So, so I'm not, uh, I'm not it, pointing fingers like why does it... It's do... asynchron uh, and the sync await works. I mean... It's a promise. I know you can use then or something. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's just like... Um, I'm not saying... I'm not sure if you advertise this. Uh, you're, it, uh, I'm not sure if this is advertised like, okay, you just run JavaScript. Cypress is JavaScript. It, but you have that expectancy when you check the source code and, and, and everything else. But when you start writing tests, like you write like regular JavaScript, I can't tell you what exactly, but I know you have some limitations. Uh, like I said, you don't have a sync await. You have something like a promise. You have the then, mm-hmm. but that then doesn't work just like any other JavaScript, you have to do some more things. If you want to, 
Yeah, I, I can remember. So, of course, these yeah. this is just yes. my rant a little bit. You, we have to check you, some code correct, and stuff. Of course, I mean, yeah. in, in situations like checking different uh, things which are easy for synchronous language, yeah. uh, since it's asynchronous, it makes it a little bit dif difficult. Def um, definitely, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of but course. there are ways to do it in a way that is then easy to understand and then easy to replicate. That's why the documentation is yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and once you do it once or twice, you can, for example, you can create your own. You can create your own. That, that, that was also uh, really fun. Uh, you can create your own uh, command. You can overwrite, for example, the click command and do it in uh, a sync await style. Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's stopping you from, from doing it. Of course, it's extra work. But uh, if you do a project, if you have a bigger project, then the extra work that you put in at the beginning will pay off in the end. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I think it's a very good solution. Uh, but I remember it still has its flaws. I mean, it has a big like documentation and everything else. But it's it, like even like the next auth example, if you check it out, uh, it only shows you like an example if you want to do like social logins, like, so GitHub and Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's mentioned if for username and password is, hey, if you're using username and password, you will not need th this dependency. But that example will still <laughs> not fix your problem because that example does not apply with the social login. Okay. See, so so it's, it's specific for, for each issue, I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course. And again, maybe it's just myself that are doing uh, like logins with username or password, but maybe I'm not the only one. Yeah. But so again, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm, I'm uh, Cypress is it's an amazing tool. Um, these are just my rants, and I got you here, so you have you you got to to hear them. So <laughs> thanks for your feedback. Any any other questions? Yes, Yuri are here. Uh, can we maybe consider having a switch uh, from the um, automation testing to a robotic process automation tool, basically creating test data with it, with Cypress. Uh, for example, the test that we have created in the uh, past half an hour. Yeah, uh, it had something like, um, um, I don't know, name, phone, and something like that. What if I want to create, um, yeah, some test data for, for my application? Uh, can it be used, like uh, running a cycle of, I don't know, 500 tests, one after the other, having some inputs from another uh, part, something like that, in order to create test data? Yeah. Um, although, uh, generally, the recommendation is not to do this via the front end. Mm -hmm. uh, so the best solution which I would recommend is to either do this via directly scripting the database or via some API calls. Uh, yeah, not so can... easy. So uh, from the perspective of the project I'm working on, um, it's so complex that we also get to the point of creating um, a mock data. So our robots basically do uh, what an actual person would do. So it opens the, the browser, clicks over there, puts the value that it needs, and basically it's the, the way of creating synthetic data, mock data. We have also test data like uh, migrated data, but as we uh, consume a lot of data during our tests, we need also to come with <laughs> extras. And uh, we need to make like uh, thousands of something, uh, objects, let's say. Yeah, just <clears throat> give me one second. Uh... We do not have the possibility, as you said, to, to, to create um, mini scripts or just using database inserts because um, we have... Uh, yeah, a, a lot of uh, a lot of tables that are involved and so on. So basically, it's easier to to create via GUI what we need. <laughs> okay, one second. Um, the fastest way which you could, um, but so it's it's your data usually generic. So username, password, uh, you. First name, last name, it's, or is it no, very it's specific? No, it's really complex. But basically, we have a form 
um, mm -hmm. that form is based on multiple screens, but it's the same thing. And we do only some small changes where we have drop downs in order to be able to have, if a drop down has, I don't know, maybe, uh, um, um, um 10 items in the list we just play with them in order to have all the all the um combinations with the with the list and everything okay uh, i mean you could try a couple of uh yeah it's just uh just a general idea just by by looking at the test that we tried to to create earlier and where we had that form with name address email I mean, and a, a, va a variation could could be uh the following so you could um go in you could record the test mm -hmm. that you have and then um duplicate it somehow and yes, come with can, the variation you can, you can duplicate it i uh can i post here yeah i have two options for you I did two videos a long time ago mm -hmm. one would be to use uh, faker js uh, to change the input wherever so if you have data that uh, can be vă numai puțin cred că putem să trecem pe română acum dacă vi mai simplu acum mie mi diferența <laughs> Deci, Dacă e... nu vorbim pe germană, putem face switch. Uh, Ioan știe și germană, e ok, deci putem să vorbim și germană. Nu știm noi! Zi tu, Ștefan, în germană. Zic că... eu, zic eu în germană, da, da, da. Nu, serios, acum putem, putem vorbi în română, dacă chiar e și e, e ok, poate vă înțelegeți mai ok. Uh, eu zic că înțelegeam și înainte, nu-i problemă. Uh, uh, da, deci ar merge făcută mai ușor varianta asta, deci cu recorderul până ce te obișnuiești cu ce ai acolo. Testul respectiv după aia parametrizat sau copiat. Sunt două variante. Fie faci o dată testul și după aceea îi dai, îl multiplici pe el în sine de X ori. Da. Nu e cea mai ortodoxă, să spunem așa. Fie îți faci tu în, cum arătam acolo, este un folder de fixtures fie pui tu acolo un JSON din ăsta mare, 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 și faci un loop în el, după da. ce ți-ai făcut codul. Și atunci îl rulezi, ăla ți-l schimbi. Nu știu, îl schimbi la o săptămână, îl schimbi cu altceva, ca să ai altate de, nu știu, user și așa mai departe, și dai să rulezi testul. Și faci un loop acolo în test și dai să meargă de 100, 200, 300, 500 de ori de câte ori vei tu, în funcție de câte entry-uri ai acolo. Da. No. În videoul ăsta două care l-am pus aici, am folosit cumva, am prezentat cum se poate folosi o dată Faker.js, care e o librărie, tot așa, care o poți instala frumos în proiectul tău, și în loc să zic pui name, ai acolo Faker.firstName și el are un, o suită de câteva sute de nume și uh, are pe mai multe, deci numai nume și prenume, are nume, prenume, adrese, uh, culori. Da. În general se poate aplica la ce zici tu mai puțin chestia aia, când ai drop-down, două, trei bucăți. Ar trebui să faci un pic de altfel de logică. Știi, dacă, adică, nu, se spune să ai prăs, testul ăsta rulează mil cu drop-down opțiunea 1, ăsta cu drop-down opțiunea 2 și așa mai departe. Pentru că, sau, da. nu, deci nu, nu există o, o, o soluție universal valabilă. Și în al doilea am prezentat cum poți să citești din JSON-ul respectiv în teste. Deci, cum ziceam, ție un... Să poate fi și Excel, nu? Mă că acolo e un pic mai diferit. N-am făcut încă pe partea asta. Uh, ce ai un fișier extern de unde ți spuse datele și de acolo poți să citești în Cypress și să zici dă bătaie, fă. Da, deci loc de joacă este. este. Eram numai curioasă dacă există o posibilitate de a face o chestie de genul ăsta. Da, da. Repet, cum am zis da. și, și da. mai, mai uh, la spre final, că Scopul Cypress-ului este nu, de end-to-end -end end -end testing. Nu-i gândi ca să uh, fie la fel de versatil și de bun ca și soluțiile de uh, robot process da, da, da. automation. Că nu da, e asta. Mă gândeam cum Dar să... se poate face. Da, ai, 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 ai faza. Face. Mm -hmm. Faza e că sunt multe chestii care uh, trebuie să le fac eu de mână, da? fără a avea cunoștințe, să zicem, de robotic process automation, deși am făcut la un moment dat o chestie de genul ăsta, 
dar îmi trebuie ceva atuluri foarte simpliste, foarte la îndemână, uh, ceea ce am văzut în seara asta, inclusiv partea de instalare și așa mai departe, și atunci să cochetez un pic cu ideea. <laughs> Da, am văzut că na, este și uh, na, problema, cum ai zis, că partea de free use are undeva la 50 de... A, bine, dar asta, de asta are... Asta, deci, repet, asta este doar dacă vrei să folosești dashboard-ul. Da, dacă da. nu, poți să rulezi 10.000 de la tine de local. Da. Este absolut nicio problemă. Uh, și poți să folosești... Deci, uh, poți să faci și integrare cu un Jenkins sau cu altceva fără să folosești dashboard-ul. No. Doar că dashboard-ul ăla no, uh, oferă Ajută. mult, oferă, o face, face foarte ușor totul. Adică ai testele tale, uh, automat le vede toată echipa, vede status, primesc, faci integrare, de exemplu, cu team sau cu Slack sau cu altceva, ei primesc mail sau notificare, bum, au rulat Ioan testele, o pica două. Nu mai trebuie să trimiți mail, nu mai trebuie să uite lumea. Deci face lucrurile mai ușor, că de-aia și plătești pentru el. Adică, ca să-ți oferi un serviciu, să, să te ajute să mergi, să, să te ajute să progresezi acolo, să te ajute să, să fie testele cât mai, cât mai mult să fie pest și să, să fie totul lumea uh, la oh, cu, ce, cu, ce, cu ce se întâmplă. Corect. corect. Da, work smart, not hard. <laughs> da, putem, putem spune și așa. Putem spune și așa. Plus că nu, uh, totuși, îți salvează... Deci, cum am arătat și cum am văzut acolo în, în, în filmuleț, el face poze și video. Rulezi tu testele, să zic, mergi la... Dacă rula, să zic că, prin absolut, lucrați în trei schimburi. Din ceva motiv, nu știu. Că mai sunt și companii care lucrează pe mai multe schimburi, pe mai multe uh, fusuri orare. Tu rulezi testele la ora 5, mergi acasă, testele rulează, vine colegul din Zimbabwe, uh, se uită, vede că testele, vede video și știe un, de unde se ia mai departe. Știi? Și poate... Continua frumos procesul. Fără să trebuiască să, să zică, Iulia, când ai la testele, ce-o picat, nu-o picat, unde-o picat, de ce-o picat, are video, are screenshot-uri, are tot trei sau acolo, scrie frumos, o picat la punctul X pentru că. Și lumea se poate apuca și da, e chestia să fie colaborare, să, să meargă pe ideea asta de, cum ai zis tu, să fie totul aware de ceea ce se întâmplă. Super! Mulțumesc! Plăcere. Am și eu curiositatea ta. Sigur. Um, estimativ, um, eu m-am jucat mai mult cu Java și Selenium. Uh, cam cât de dificil ar fi trecerea spre Cypress? Uh, depinde, <laughs> depinde foarte mult din ce punct de vedere. Uh, ca să scrii testele, nu e dificil. Asta să... am văzut, da. O să te afecteze la partea exact care zicea uh, Adrian, sau cine? Uh, Adrian. Da. Partea de async await. Aia doare cel mai rău, indiferent că se numește Cypress, că se numește uh, 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 Gest, că se numește. Uh, deci, indiferent orice framework de, de JavaScript ai folosi, în momentul când ești obișnuit cu Java și zici uh, cum este. Nu, no, în Java. Da. Uh, get by text sau get text sau get context, nu știu ce. Te aștept să fie atunci acolo. Nu, aici nu e așa. Da, am văzut asta. Chiar asta, e, asta, e, asta e marea uh, getting used to it, ca să zic așa. Păi, na, e practic trecerea de la Java la JavaScript și la da. JavaScript și... și... javascript e dubios. Asta, asta. asta e problema. Asta e, asta e problema, știi? Adică, ai putea să scrii teste și uh, uh, o perioadă bună de timp să-ți meargă lucrurile ușor și bine. Și la un să rulează un test și să n-ai nici cea mai vagă idee de ce pică. Pentru că pică din partea de asta, de async away. Pentru ceva motiv, nu știu, elementul nu e acolo. Da, am înțeles că în structura Cypress e chestia aia de blocurile de cod care se pun toate într-un stack și după aceea se execută. Și cred că asta ar fi problematic. Sau, uh, mă... La ce te referi? Că nu, nu înțeleg că se pun toate într-un stack și se execută. Uh, blocurile de cod din testa. Păi poți să faci și tu metode separate dacă vrei. Deci uh, ce am făcut eu acolo, de exemplu, poți să iei tot codul respectiv, să faci o metodă separată gen, uh, nu știu, fill, for, nu știu ce, știi? Și numai să-i dai parametrii. Și atunci testul meu are o, o linie. Că așa faci și în Java, faci la fel, nu? Adică și în Java ai linii de cod care faci metode. Da, pe aici, 
exact. Mi-aș pe... uh, să știi că hai să cu page obje- un model. Unii zic că nu merge în Cypress, eu zic că merge în Cypress. Acum, <laughs> eu am folosit și page obje- un model în Cypress. Mi-am făcut pagini cu selectori acolo, am făcut export la pagină, pagina după aceea am folosit. Adică, foarte similar cu tu faci import, eu fac export. Adică, foarte similar cu ce faci tu în Java. Știi? Doar că, eu zic asta, singura problemă care o văd, și asta am avut-o și eu, și am înnebunit multă vreme, e cu partea asta de, de, de async. Și async away tu și el e foarte periculos, din punctul meu de vedere. Că, până la urmă, încerci să faci JavaScript să fie sincron, când JavaScript-ul, de fapt, e asincron. Adică, și acolo riști, tu să fii 100% sigur că linia asta de cod stă și acolo se întâmplă și să nu se întâmple așa. De? Dar, dar, cum ziceam, sunt în documentații, este clar, zice, bun, dacă vrei să verifici asta. A, parte foarte fain, nu, asta n-am putut să o zic acolo la Cypress. A, are o logică șmecheră în spate, ca să combată partea asta cu sau deficiența asta de async await. Um, în cazul în care el crapă între ghilimele, știi, că nu merge ceva, el are un retry. Default retry. Adică, de exemplu, dacă faci un, un, un assert sau... Este, este o logică. Acum, no, mai, ar trebui să mers în documentație și văzut exact explicat. Ideea e că um, are niște mecanisme care te ajută în momentul când faci o verificare. Când vrei să verifici că un element este acolo, că textul da, este da, acolo. Da, da, am văzut că parte, să mă așteaptă, are uh, wait-ul care, care, Da, da, nu numai wait-ul implicit, wait-ul ăla e un picuț, așteaptă un pic mai mult, știi? Uh-huh. Adică are și incorporat un mecanism în care poți să-i spui testele, ultimul, uh, e, e, că ați zis că este chestia de chaining, corect, este leagă și comenziile, comenziile merg, se pot lega între ele și este hierarhie între ele și poți să-i spui, uh, când am un assert, eu pot găsi configurație, Repetăm de trei ori înainte să faci failed. Că așa e sistemul. Mai, nu, nu știu, avem un sistem care e mai dubaș și atunci asta te ajută, știi? Dar, repet, poate exista, deci poți să lucrezi o lună, două, trei, cinci, șase luni, să n-ai nicio problemă. Și cândva, într-o zi, ai acel element, al naibii de element, <laughs> care cumva, din ceva motiv, nu, uh, nu merge cum trebuie. Dar să știi că are, are multe chestii care uh, nu le ai în Java. De exemplu, are șmecherie în care poți în Shadow Dom să te bagi direct în, înăuntru. Dacă, știi, dacă ai avut cu Shadow Dom. Nu. No. No, adică, practic, uh, el vede sau îți oferă șansa să apeși pe ceva ce tu în mod normal nu vezi. <laughs> Și nu, nu ai putea să apeși. Uh, deci are, are chestii care are plusuri și minusuri, ca orice asta. Eu zic să încerci. Eu zic să încerci dacă mergi în documentație. Este da, parte, m-am jucat zi ăsta. Este, este parte de um, real world, uh, real app example, este parte de uh, ăsta. Și um, dacă chiar vrei, uh, nu știu câte link să se dau la Ștefan, că apoi deja... Uh, sunt câte vrei, eu le, eu le trimit, nu e problemă. Deci este, um, sunt tutoriale în care explică foarte, foarte fain și gratuite exact ca să înțelegi aceasta, să poți face ușor această trecere. Știi? Uh-huh. Sunt câțiva ambasatori de Cypress. Dacă intri pe Test Automation University, se numește, acolo sunt și pe Java și pe Am Python. Cum, no. A, deja înseamnă că ai văzut. Acolo, no. Și acolo sunt două de la Philip Frick pe Cypress. Și dacă le faci Secvențial, adică încep cu primul și după aia pe ăla de advanced, după aceea, te ajută mult să înțelegi că el, el tipul, nu știu dacă l-ai văzut până acum, dacă l-ai văzut, mm-hmm. el a învățat JavaScript învățând Cypress. Păi probabil că asta o să fie și la mine, nu? Deci el așa, practic, o învățat și acum mănâncă JavaScript pe pâine și e ambasador de Cypress și face... Uh, uh, NPM package-uri și face conferințe și face training-uri și așa mai departe. Deci e foarte tare tipul. Și are aceste uh, no, test automation university, e frumos, e gratis și structura bine. 
Da, dacă vrei să începi, aș merge pe ideea, încep cu Getting Started with the Cypress, cu exemplu de acolo și pe aia mergi pe Test Automation University. Super. Da. Cred că e momentul să ne oprim aici, că deja e o jumătate. Să nu că ne-ar da cineva și... afară. Vrei, vrei să mergi și tu și, și tu la jambă, am înțeles. Da, 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 vreau să mă duc și eu. Da. E ok. Oricum, uh, deci o să strâng atunci toate linkurile și le trimit la toată lumea. Uh, mulțumesc că ați participat în această seară, ce pot să zic. Și eu vă mulțumesc. Mulțumim, Ion, pentru prezentarea minunată. Uh, Probabil că ne revedem în 2023 <laughs> cu alte teme. Probabil și mai multe teme de testare. Cine știe? Vedem. Da. Oricum, mersi și ne auzim. Ne vedem. Dacă nu ne mai auzim, sărbători fericite. Mulțumim. Asemenea, seară faină. Și o seară faină. Ceau. Pa, pa. pa, pa.